Actually. <laughs> okay, but the purpose of that demo, which hasn't worked out too well in practice, which I guess is funny again, is that I have touch support implemented for slideshow up and running when you do it right. Graphics, and you use your style graphics then to actually draw on the output device. 
So, that gives you your APIs like drawing a line, drawing a rectangle, and things like that. A lot of our APIs are optional, so we have um, uh, fallbacks for those cases where they're not implemented on a given platform. So you can have some very, very fat ones, just a drawing in EPS, which is only implemented for the printer uh, backend, and not implemented for anything else that falls back to uh, getting a, a fallback graphic out of the EPS and displaying that on the screen. And then as part of that, then you have the native widget framework, which gives us the um, theming for the platform that you're on. So we're not actually using the native widgets, we're just using those native widgets' ability to draw themselves onto the top level frame. So we're not using GTK buttons or GTK uh, frames, we just have a single GTK window at the very top, and then use uh, the drawing system uh, to emulate them all on the top of our own implementations. So usually there are some standard implementations you have, with the Windows one, we have the Mac one, the Quartz one, and then we have the one we have in the Linux. And they're all dynamically loaded depending on the detection time. So, uh, we always had, or at least as far back as I know, we always had the generic X11 one. And what we did at that point then was we just inherited the KDE2 one and the, uh, sorry, the GKT one and the KDE one from it. Now, the issue there, of course, is that whenever we didn't need to prevent something and the old X11 one was able to do it anyway, we just left the X11 implementation there and uh, reused it. That's what we have here. So we heard from the X11 style frame for the GTK one, and so on. A lot of places then, as I said, we just take the underlying XID of the X version and just do all the tweaks to it manually. Printing, uh, we just use the generic cups back in, which we reuse mostly uh, on Linux and on Mac. And the entirety of the cut and paste and the drag and, drag, drag and drop stuff we have is all from, is all the X11 one. So even on GDK2 port, a lot of what we're doing is all X11 based. So, when it comes to the GDK3 one, we have a problem that we can't just redo the bits that we did in GDK2 and redo them and we have a fully functioning GDK3 version. Because we have all those old X things which were never uh, done with the GTK APIs in the first place. With the change then to trying to do away and all that, we have to move away from using PixMaps directly and all of the rest of those um, direct X stuff. So, we do, 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 <coughs> so in that case then, as far as the uh, PixMap surfaces, we need a replacement for that. And the same. What we have at the same time is we have a, a headless plugin or an SVP plugin, where SVP was a starting portal. That was meant to be used for server applications and headless cases, where we do document conversions and all that. Started off as a, um, a proprietary add-on for Star Office, and ended up getting um, uh, rolled back into the uh, open office about a couple of years after it. So it was created as a an optional part of open office because of its historical disconnect from the original code base. So, again, the headless mode is implemented in the same manner as any of the other backends that we have supported, the X11 one, or the Quartz one, or, or, or the Windows one. And it com comes with a mostly complete uh, style graphics mechanism for drawing into it. So, it is not as fully featured as the Mac one, or the next uh, um, one, in the sense that it's missing a whole pile of stuff like alpha blends and various things like that, and falls back then to slightly substandard uh, fallbacks. So the new GTK3 one then uh, effectively inherits from the SVP headless backend, and then we bring in a whole pile of stuff from the GTK2 backend, which did not rely on X. So you've got a kind of a merge there of the GTK2 one and the, GTK, and the SVP one to give you the GTK3 um, plugin there. Now, getting it that far, not much of that is anything really to do with me. Um, the headless backend was already there from Sun, and uh, Mike and Meeks and Co got that bootstrapped and up and running. But that was between about 2011 and about 2013, and it wasn't complete. 
and wasn't going anywhere very fast. Uh, Michael is using it as the demo for the uh, the Broadway demo for um, the online LibreOffice. So it was more a kind of a demoware at that stage than actually something that you could use. All right, so that's where we were around, I suppose, January or February this year, and it became a kind of priority for us to get GK3 support working so that we could get Broadway support along with that for LibreOffice, and so that we could get some basic touch support up on top of that as well, given that GK3 comes with very straightforward APIs for touch, but I wanted to go and put all those things together so that we couldn't duplicate the effort coming down the line. Alright, so um, the headless backend sits up on top of our base DMT bitmap buffer, which has completely different strides as Cairo. So there's a whole pile of uh, uh, format conversion code everywhere just to try and match it up. It seems like a whole lot easier just to change our structures to match those with Cairo's in the first place so they have the same stride. Same thing as well then, finding a, a, a format for base DMT which would match one of, the, one of the formats that Cairo uses is not that easier than doing a whole pile of conversion, making mistakes, etc. So, creating the RGBX format for our backend allows us then to use Cairo to draw directly to our services, and then we can copy directly um, from our service to the um, Cairo context provided in the draw, <coughs> draw handler. Alright, so the first problem there is that that's a 32 bit bitmap format. It takes 32 bits of space, even though we're only using 24 bits of it. And that gives us a whole slew of errors all the way down our um, graphics stack where we're just not supporting 32 bit things correctly at all. A lot of work there in fixing all those pre existing bugs. We have to improve our Cairo text rendering to be reusable for this um, surface as opposed to drawing directly to the X uh, bitmap that we were in the past. And we're drawing two. So that base DMT then existed just as a surface we could draw to for a long time. At this point then we wanted to actually know what bits of it had been modified at any particular time, so Michael added damage support to all of that. The idea then is that and all those damage had you right to the surface and you damage an area that we just directly, directly route that to a Q draw area. And then because of the simplified bitmap buffer at Skyward area, we then just copy that section from our buffer straight to the context that was provided and draw. The problem there then is that we have a whole stack of just graphical artifacts all over the screen. The damage tracking is fairly new and just wasn't correct. So again, vast quantities of debugging all the way down there again. Uh, in the damage tracking, pile of corner cases, lots of existing problems in our X backend where we have various bugs, but we rely on those bugs to be that way. So then go back to your bitmap sort of uh, damage tracker and basically break it to be the same as everything else that's broken so you get consistency there and that things begin to work correctly. Right the um, yeah the native we do group drawing some parts of it were implemented in our GTK1 so some things kind of worked but not not, not sufficiently that you could actually you know use it and, and be confident about it. So again go through the entirety of what we did in GTK 2 one and come up with something that's equivalent to the GTK 3 one so at least we're visually similar in both cases. Um, yeah. Luckily enough, because coincidentally GTK 3 has a lot of things in it that are very similar to what we have in the Mac, a lot of the quartz hacks that we have uh, in, the, in, the, in that backend can be used in the GTK backend as well. So the focus rectangle is slightly outside the widget things like that, they're all corner cases that we really had support for, it's just a matter of using them for GTK3 as well as the um, Mac one. But I found it particularly difficult for um, the native widget is the finding of the right uh, context and styles to match what you see in GTK3 uh, with, to match the, the correct combination of, of those in GTK3, to find that difficult enough. So you often end up going back into the GTK source itself to find out what exactly the combinations are. So the common one is trying to get the menu arrows uh, in your menus drawn the same way that GTK does. You have to go find out, is it using the menu context, the menu item context, what state is it in, and so on. So again, it all just sucks time. 
but that does allow us in GTA 3 to get some uh, gesture support. So we have the swipe, long press, and a couple of those that are in the um, slideshow at the moment. Uh, there's also some other work going on in the Android port, so we basically need to merge what we're doing in GTK3 with some of the work in Android so that we get the same, um, we can make use of the support that's being added for uh, uh, mobile devices and make use of them for the FET app as well. We have uh, auto mnemonics in menus and menu bars as well, that's not in file at all, that can be in file at one, um, unless it's that port. To the, that you hold on your alt key and the, the underlines appear. Uh, that came in very recently from Raspberry Pi, so I'm pretty with that. Yeah, so it makes it much more like a um, GTA 3 application. So that's uh, the laborious stuff, but not particularly uh, different from what we already had in GTA 2. But as I was saying earlier, because we used to just inherit from the X1 and we ignored the whole pile of stuff, now we have to go and redo them again with the actual GTK3 APIs, as opposed to just relying on the, the historic implementations. So, uh, two ones there are cut and paste. Yeah, so you have to do that from scratch. So I was putting that off for ages, but the APIs aren't as bad in GTK as the original X ones are, so it's all fairly cleaned up there. So about a day or two effort there for cut and paste. Uh, accessibility was difficult to figure out not because it's difficult to do in GTK3, it's actually pretty easy in GTK3, but because we had to start, we had to do it in such a complicated way, it took quite a while to realise that the whole entire complicated stack that we had done in GTK2 could be replaced by about four or five lines for GTK3. So, again, accessibility is much easier to hook into in GTK3 than it was for GTK2. Cut and paste, again, much easier to do than, than expected, far, far smaller than the actual X implementation. Um, yeah, so for GTA 3 there's a, a get accessible member that we can make use of and we can just take this entire huge block of code and just, you know, replace it with one line to set that there. Right, so that's getting us up and running and in the demo there is just GTA 3 under X and that works. It's cool to GTA 2, I think it looks better than the GTA 2 one, naturally. Um, more and more, more natural native than the uh, GTK2 one does. Uh, so, once that was done, then we're looking at what to do with Wayland and see will it just work out of the box on the Wayland. So, started up under uh, Fedora 22 and you see nothing at all, blank, completely blank. So, yeah, so the set double buffer, I know it's documented the same, don't use it under anything except X, otherwise, it won't work. It'd be good if it said that at runtime. You've just used double buffer, it's Wayland, it doesn't work. Otherwise, you just see a blank screen and you're wondering what it is. When you go back and you reread the documentation that you have read a couple of years earlier, when that line wasn't in it, then you go back and you read it. Oh, there's a new line that says don't use that. Oh, don't use that. Then you get some content. Um, yeah. You get some content, but it's all, for us, offset up to the corner a small amount. So what we were doing there is we just have a top level GTK window and they were claiming that uh, we're going to draw to it, we're going to handle all the things about it and don't you worry about GTK. So that's fine, GTK doesn't. And under Wayland then, the entire decorations of what not are inside the window so that you are trying to draw underneath which decorations appear. So it's all offset to one side. So easy solution here is that you just put a single child into it, and then you claim you look after the child and not the top level. So you do that, you get the draw then, and everything then fits into the right place. So what we have in our case is we have a top level GTK window, then we had one single child which we're using to capture the accessibility events in the previous slide. So now that top level child, which is just a, a fixed, uh, inherited fixed, is now the one we draw to instead and leave the top level one with one for, for drawing. The next step then is the uh, Windows Unrecyclable and similar problem again. We're connecting to mouse events on the top level window and they don't actually, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It gets straight forward again, uh, push the event box into the stack as well, start listening to mouse events and gesture events on that window as well. So it's just top level window, can be toxic, don't judge it. So similar problems. Still remain for 
sizing of the window, we need to uh, work with the child and not the top level. Right, so that's where we are at the moment. We have it working fine for X, mostly some improvements there. We had it uh, in uh, Gish, we had it working for uh, Wayland, but only some minor and most of the issues there. So what's left over to do? Um, we don't have video playback yet. Uh, I don't think it should be particularly difficult to do. I'd just be putting it off because while I think it's straightforward, it's still a fairly corner case in presentations to stick videos into them. So I think it's worth my while spending uh, more effort on the more common things first. Uh, the, sizing uh, the, the sizing tweaks I mentioned there with the top level, we have a whole lot of code that tries to figure out what the real size of the window is, taking into account decorations and things like that. It's all redundant now, um, so we'll have to basically remove a lot of that for GTK3 and clean things up. So under Wayland, your size is still not quite right. It works perfectly fine, but it's uh, 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 the wrong size. The um, selection rectangles. A lot of cases we're still using the ZAR selections or we're using stippling. Uh, that's not implemented in the base BMP headless backend. And that's part of the general problem then, is that the, the SVP one was, is designed for that document conversion kind of a case, not for the, the visual screen case. So a lot of things aren't implemented fully there. So what we have problems with is SVGs look a bit jagged, um, alpha blending isn't complete in a lot of places, and issues like that. So what we need to do is we need to improve the headless backend in order to improve the GTK3 backend. But because the Android backend is also implemented on top of ASDMP, you get two platforms improved for uh, working on one area. Another issue as well then, and you'll see it in the debug output, is that all of the bitmaps, uh, the touch bit case, is an unoptimized case. All the work has been done on 24 bit and 16 bit and 8 bit, so there is a lot of work available there to improve uh, those cases. So uh, those will be the next things to do. Once they're done, we'll have uh, something that's pretty good. But coming down the line, after that, this whole theming stuff uh, is, is just very, very awkward. So it would be a lot easier if we were an actual real GTK application in the first place. So how could we go, go, go in that direction? Uh, well, we already have the case under Mac and Unity that we use the system menus and we just fill them uh, from what the contents of our ordinary menus would be. We could probably extend that and actually just put GDK menu into our application in the first place, the very top. Don't bother with our emulation of anything and then just fill it the same way we do with those other platforms. So you have native GDK uh, top level, native GDK menu bar, and then one widget which would be everything else belonging to us. The other thing we did uh, last year and the year before was that we ditched our old file format for dialogues and all the rest of the UI uh, components and we moved everything over to the GTK3 builder file format. Just file format. It's still our loader, our code, our widgets, themed with the GTK engine, but it's still our code and our list. So I have a feature branch that did a demo where uh, the actual .ui files that we normally load via our code and then pretend to be a GTK window, we actually load it with GTK and show a true native GTK message dialog. It's just message dialogs for now. And that works reasonably well. So I could see that we could move a little bit further in that direction and actually just start loading everything directly with real GTK dialogs, turn our um, existing widgets into just wrappers around the true GTK ones, and that would get us pretty far. I would work fairly well for lots of basic dialogues anyway, and I could see um, how we can manage more complicated ones as well. But uh, the hope I had at the last conference about kind of going in that direction, I think one of the steps would be uh, localization and all that. So it would be handier if we also moved away from our existing uh, infrastructure there to a, a simple get takes one. We have some complicated process, but fundamentally we have our own file format for translations as well. If we moved everything over to get text, 
solve a lot of problems, but then it brings in the issue for us at least size. It doesn't seem to be an issue for other projects, but the full contents of your uh, source strings are in the MO files as well, each individual one. So it will explode. So I don't know if there's a solution there, but we need to look into it. There's no way of doing that. But if we were able to do that, we can move to get text, then we'll be able to localize via GTK the GTK dialogues that would then be native in the GTK file format, and then would be pretty much it. I mean, very blue sky at that point, could you just move all of our platforms over to GTK for Mac and uh, Windows as well, as opposed to keeping our, our, our three uh, major uh, ports alive. Okay, thank you for your time. Would you mind doing a rundown of which bits of GTK you are using and which bits are being re-implemented at the moment? Um, your top level window is a GTK window, each individual one. Then inside of that, we are using all the GTK cut and paste APIs, all of the, um, I'm not sure, we're called, we call them the native widget framework, the actual widget drawing calls, I don't know what they called. The, the widget drawing codes we are uh, used as well. Um, what else? So, so you don't actually have a window containing GTK widgets, like LibreOffice tracks what the widgets are and ask GTK to draw them. Yeah, basically, because um, okay, you have a top level real GTK window, you have a, like, a real GTK link box, and then you have a real GTK fixed container, and then we draw everything inside of that. But we ask GTK to draw it for us in pieces, and we have our own actual widget uh, hierarchy inside of it, which only belongs to us and not to GTK. Okay, that makes sense, thanks. Any other questions? Thank you very much. <laughs>